Greetings, Slashaholics, and welcome to another episode of After the Slash. Uh, all right, so we have just reviewed Freddy vs. Jason, the novelization. Uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any other opinions on it. I mean, it was, it was really fun to listen to, and uh, if you're out there, I would highly recommend listening to it. It, um, it definitely it hits a lot better than the movie does. I'll, I'll be honest on that one. I think... Because when I first started the channel, I put out a narration like every day. But that's when I wasn't really adding sound effects or music or whatever. And then after about three months, after like the first seven books or something, I kind of slowed down. Put it out a few a week or two or three a week and I started putting the music and sound effects. There's a little more work. But when I got to Freddy vs. Jason, I think it was like year two of the channel, like late year two. I think I was putting out a new chat, like new chapters, like every other day. Like this book had me coming back. I was, uh, and I'd been burnt for a while because Death Moon had just about killed my will to narrate uh, books on the channel. I, I really did come close to quitting uh, because of Death Moon. Like I dreaded uh, narrating. I had to put that on the back burner for six months. There were so uh, many no incoherent sentences about nothing in particular. It was I can imagine. How frustrating it was to read that. And we, you know, we even said on episode 50 of Out of Print Slashers, we're going to, like, bring on, like, uh, Slasher Pepper and stuff, because he did a review of it, and we were going to revisit talking about it and just get other people's input on it. Maybe we can find a, another, a couple other people. I would love to get the author to come on, you know, and, and talk about it. I don't think that we were too insulting of the actual author because i mean the dude no matter what we say about the book he still will go down in history as one of the people that wrote an official novel of uh jason x you know friday the 13th we can't and there say were, there that, was a lot of so. good stuff in the book it's just it wasn't like it, it was like having all the right components to build a ship and then just connecting everything wrong you know it just it was just slightly off yeah so you know books i mean you read them uh, sometimes narrate them. I mean, it, books, man. Yeah, it's going to be fun to revisit uh, perspectives that have had to read them and review them. Uh, so I I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be fun. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a lot's been going on since the last time we had After the Slash. I mean, there's a lot of uh, announcements for movies. Friday the 13th is getting a new movie next year, man. Did you hear about that? <clears throat> I heard that, and I don't believe it. I've been hearing that shit since 2009. I'll believe it when I actually see footage. And well, even then, I might not believe it. I've seen footage of stuff that never got off the ground. There's a, a guy that works for Behavior that makes Dead by Daylight. And apparently, un, unconfirmed, they've been <clears throat> in talks of getting the license for the new Jason that's going to be come out next year. To finally add Jason as a killer because the lawsuit and all that's tied up and finished. I would like to see Gun Media, but uh, you know, do something with the with the Friday the Thirteenth game, like update it for the new systems, do the stuff they had wanted to do. But they've moved on to like Texas Chainsaw. They got a Ghostbusters game coming out, and our buddy David Bergantino worked on a game recently that's going to be coming out in the near future: Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the video game. Have you heard nice. of that? I, st I still haven't seen that movie. I can never make it past, like, the first 20 minutes. Like, I know everyone's, it's an amazing movie, and every time I go to Spirit Halloween, there's Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but I have not felt that strong of a desire to, like, go past that point. It's fun. It's fun, Cheese. It might be one of those movies that uh, me and Alex have to make fun of one day on Slash Tracks if uh, William Pattison, I mean, Master Evil makes us do it. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a fun movie. It's, it's kind of like Leprechaun and stuff like that. It's just fun. It's good, fun cheese. Um, Pinhead, it's got a TV show coming out. Um, I thought, I thought it was a movie. Is it a show now? I thought it was going to be a show. Is it, a, is it just a movie that's coming out? I thought it was going to be a TV series. I thought it was just a movie they were coming out with, but they're, but I don't really know. They're, they're keeping the plot so under wraps. Other than the fact that there's a female pinhead, that that's the only thing I know about this movie. And like someone just released a video today saying, uh, here she is as pinhead. And it's all, it's like uh, a time-lapse video of them doing like the mold for her face. And I'm like, 
That's not a pinhead reveal. I don't know what that was. That was me watching a minute of a person getting plaster on their face and then it getting taken off. That's not a reveal video. <laughs> It's, it's actually a TV. Actually, a TV series, man. Okay, I'm up to. I'm up yeah, for it. Uh, I'm reading a thing right here, and it's saying it's a TV series. Um, there's not a whole lot of information there. Let's see here. <clears throat> uh, Pinhead will be played by actor Jamie Clayton. Since eight, the L word, Generation Q. Um, I, I don't see the problem with that. I really don't. Um, maybe they're going with uh, the comic thing. You know, maybe she's going to be Kirsty, the Kirsty. Uh, if they priestess. if they do reveal that, that will make the show just like skyrocket. If you especially if you don't know that until like the end, where it was like, don't you remember who you were, Kirsty? And then it's just. That would be great. That would that would make it all make more sense, and I think all the hate it's getting would drop, you know. Uh, and it's funny I mentioned Leprechaun. <clears throat> Warwick Davis always said he wouldn't return to horror until his kids were grown. They're grown now, so I'm curious if he's gonna uh, follow up on that. I'd love to see him uh, step into the green costume one more time. Uh, they're talking about uh, Robert England. Uh, did you hear about, uh, about that thing? The Blumhouse people, uh, came out and said they want to make a Nightmare on Elm Street movie in the vein of Halloween 2018. Uh, I guess that means ignore some sequels or something. And they said if they make this movie, they guarantee Robert England will play, uh, Freddy one last time. If they, they, they can, they can get Robert England to do it. And the only way they could do that, Sean, at this point, I think that that we're in 2022, so I know it could happen. <clears throat> that it's so easy to, you know, an actor doesn't have to do any stunts whatsoever, you know, with like the CG technology and everything we have now. So I don't think that it would be too draining on Robert England, even in his even in his 70s. Um, and there's kind of a resurgence for him with the new uh, Stranger Things season. You know, he had a small part, but it was a very cool part uh, of Stranger Things. And I think that's going to, you know, make him recognizable for younger people, too. So I think if we got a new Freddy Krueger movie and he was somehow played Freddy, I think it would it would be great. It would be a good send off. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? another horror movie I saw recently. It was called Choose or Die on Netflix. Oh, yes. And yes. I mean, he's not in it. He voices it. the video game narrator that the people play that cursed game. And I, that was cool because he plays himself. He's like, this is Robert England narrating your video game. Like, you cheated. Here are the consequences. Almost like if Robert England was the voice of Jumanji. That movie, man, was great. You know, thanks for that recommendation. And yeah, anybody I, I watching. The soundtrack. I downloaded the soundtrack when I was done. That was good. I love the rewinding and fast forwarding part. I hated to see that character go. Uh, and the final showdown. Where they couldn't hurt, uh, if they hurt themselves, it hurt the other. Per like it was, it, the whole thing was great. It was a great, uh, underrated movie. I don't think enough people know about the movie, but it, it it really played out good. And I would love to see sequels to it. You know, it's like if Jumanji met The Ring, a little bit. Yes, yes, uh, but really good, like in a really good way, uh, perfectly melded together. Um, some of the stuff I wish we could have seen. Like the whole rat thing, you know? I would have loved to see what that rat I, looked that like. That actually, I think that was, like, that was interesting enough to let your imagination play what the hell was happening in that apartment. You just, you heard about what the, what the rat was doing, but, like, I, I don't know, it, it made it more interesting not actually seeing it. I me, can't it remember the actual line, but the boyfriend says something about if he made a video game, he would make it this or that if he cheated, you know, whatever. You got, you're, you got punished. Yeah. And as soon as I heard him say that, me and my wife were watching. I was like, "Oh, that's 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 what's going to happen to him. <laughs> He's gonna they're gonna cheat, and that's gonna come back." And oh, sure it's gonna enough. be like Jumanji, where Peter grew a tail. Uh, kinda, but he dies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what else? What else have you been? Uh, have you? Did you finally finish all your Godzilla movies and uh, monster movies? Oh, I finished all the Godzillas. My brother and I are working on all twenty-seven James Bond movies. Oof! 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 We just finished number twenty-one, Casino Royale, with Daniel Craig. Do you think uh, the next James Bond will be a woman? I don't know how to respond to that because I have not finished James Bond and I might have a completely different opinion by the end of it. I, I, I At this point, I don't know because if you change a lot about a character, it becomes a different character. I just... James Bond, the character, is kind of a misogynist. So if they're going to make a female James Bond that's not a misogynist, I mean, that's a, that's a different character. That's not... James yeah. is a set character. And I don't have I don't have a problem with, like... I, 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 I honestly don't even know what to do with this subject at a certain point. Yeah, they don't... They don't... I don't mind when they do the gender swap if it makes sense. But just doing it for the sake of doing it... Like, I, I feel like that's what they did with Doctor Who. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. And I don't, I don't hate her episodes, but it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like Doctor Who. Um, what no, she's I, she's good as the Doctor, but the episode she, her, the writing in her episodes is so boring. Like I found yeah. myself yawning, and it's Doctor, the world of imagination. They could go to any planet, any time, and they're just dealing with like oil spills and climate change stuff and like at one point a space racist go back goes back in time to stop rosa parks from sitting on a bus i'm just like i get that that's like i just a sp he mastered the ability to time travel and he wants to set back segregation i just eh. <laughs> it it was not a well-written for doctor who i mean i could see this as like black mirror or something but doctor who it's 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 we it it's kind of the problem I'm having right now with uh, Resident Evil, the TV show. Before I knock this show, I will tell y'all... Okay, I have this weird thing where if I don't think I'm going to be interested in something, I will pick a random episode. Because sometimes people are like, oh, well, the first episode wasn't good, or the second one wasn't good. Almost every review for Resident Evil, the TV show, they're like, first two episodes are horrible, I quit the show. So I, I watched the finale before I watched the show. And I was bored. I was very bored watching the finale of this show that I've never seen before. And they changed so much about the character. I feel like they, they literally wrote an entire different show, entirely different show, and they just name-dropped a couple people and expected it to be Resident Evil. And then they're like, oh, they're in a room. But the umbrella symbol is white and red. Why don't we make half the scenes white and half the scenes red? Let's just change the lens on the camera. Like, that doesn't make Resident Evil. So I feel like with Doctor Who, with Jodie Whittaker, it's not a bad show. It's just I feel like someone did a show and then they slapped the Doctor Who logo onto it. That's all I'll say about that. Resident Evil on Netflix, the fact that it just got canceled means that that show has one of the most depressing endings of any show I've ever seen. Like, the main character gets shot in the stomach by her sister. She's left to die as her sister kidnaps her child. And that's the end of the show. There's never going to be a sequel or a follow-up or anything. <laughs> oh, my God, it's depressing. Uh, about, that scene, the whole series. <laughs> about that scene right there. Okay, I, w I was watching a thing. It was a compilation of bad lines in movies lines where nobody can really make them good it was mortal Kombat annihilation <laughs> when she looks at her mom and goes mother you're alive and she goes too bad you will die <laughs> <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong but was that not the vibe of the finale of resident evil but you're my sister too bad you will die <laughs> that's yeah, not what she was... said but that was like the exact sentiment in that scene like, I can't tell if these people are bad actors and actresses or they have a terrible script they have to make work and it just doesn't. And how Everything many times, falls flat. How many times does her sister escape death in that final episode? There's a giant crocodile. There's like, everybody gets gunned down except for her sister who's just standing there when the people are getting killed, you know. She doesn't get killed by the alligator. She doesn't get killed by the guns. 
and she just keeps popping back up. It's like, how did it took forever for the little girl to get to where she was at when she got kidnapped, but the sister just shows up like she was just hiding behind a rock waiting, you know, with a group of people, mercenaries. Uh, the fact that the croc I thought I would have liked to know why the crocodile didn't attack the little, little girl. You know, it was almost like petting it or something. It's like it came out of nowhere. It's like I thought I was watching Game of Thrones with the dragons or something. Um, but then the crocodile just dies. I'm like, it, it felt like there were two different directors, and one's like, I'm gonna do a mutant giant crocodile, and then like he got fired. And the next time I came in, it's weird. Get rid of it, and they just blew it up. And, like it, it added nothing. It didn't. Did it even kill anybody? I mean, seriously, by the time that crocodile, because they're like, we gotta release the crocodile. It's gonna take out all the umbrella employees. But the sister already did that with her drone machine gun. So when the crocodile came, it had nothing. It had no one to kill. And then she got in the helicopter and killed it. It's just, it, I don't understand what happened. It, it was like in Superman Two when he throws that S and it wraps everyone like a net and then just dissolves and everyone just goes back to what they were doing. I mean, I, there was no payoff. The first episode of that show, Resident Evil. Out of nowhere, a giant fucking caterpillar comes and just fucks the main character up. A giant caterpillar uh, just shows up. You find out that the T-virus, it infects humans and turns them into what it turns them into. But, like, if it if it touches an animal, it makes them big. And there's no explanation why. I mean, it's, it's kind just, of the video games, but... It's I mean, like the Resident Evil has the giant monster, you know, the giant uh, animals and stuff. So we're going to... That's one of the things we're going to shoehorn into the show. Um, at least with Resident Evil, uh, the seven movie series, you know, it wasn't right on point with the video games, but they made an effort and they did something original, and it was fun, and it was action-packed. This one, they it's like they wanted to be true to the games, but completely be opposite of the games. And I don't know how... Maybe you're right. Maybe just different people worked on it, and then other people came in to finish it. But it was boring. It didn't make sense. Wesker made no sense whatsoever. It just felt, it just felt like, like Walking Dead... Re Walking Dead subtitle Resident Evil it, it just it really did not have that game feel yeah and you know Wesker there's a scene where there's like five Wesker clones or three Wesker clones and the real Wesker shows up and he's getting ready to leave to go off to where uh, you know he gets killed in Resident Evil 5 in the volcano and everything but his clones are like a multiplicity with Michael Keaton you know, it's like there's the really smart clone, there's the really nice clone, and then there's like the one that's kind of been copied too many times, so he's kind of slow, you know? And uh, I even quoted Multiplicity while watching it. it, it it's the actor that plays uh, Wesker is a great actor. I've seen him in lots of things. He's a good actor. I'm not putting him down. But the script horrendous I don't know how Netflix approved this show I know they had a deal with Capcom and everything about making Resident Evil content I heard the CGI shows much better I want to see that um, I just hope this doesn't stop them from trying a, Re a Resident Evil show again because I think it can be done good as a TV series it really can but they're going to have to not try to change everything don't get a Henry Wu type person that wants to do his own vision of things, like with fucking Freddy versus Jason, uh, get somebody that loves the game, loves the canon, wants to do it justice on screen, and I think you're going to have a good, entertaining show. Uh, I really hope we get that someday. But with this failing about, this way, I don't know. You're talking about a, a bad script for that guy. I'm thinking of the point where he pours gasoline on the ground, and they're like, what are you doing? And he goes, making a bomb. And then he like holds a match up, and I'm like, that's not what that is. I, I thought he was going to... He's a chemist. He's a scientist. I thought, I thought he was going to put some stuff together. He literally just dumps some gasoline on the ground. And I love... Last thing I'll say about this show. Nobody negotiates in this show. It was like, um, I'm holding your kid hostage. Do what I want or I'll kill the kid. And then they just kill the kid. Or it's just like, uh, I'm holding the match. If you try to take me down, 
uh, I'll burn this place to the ground, and they just shoot the person in the hand. And I'm like, I just, I love no one negotiates. I, that's not a usual thing in movies. Usually there's some bargaining. No, you try to negotiate in the show, you're getting shot. Like, I just watched, I just watched one episode. I just watched the finale. I watched the whole thing, man. There's an episode <laughs> of this show. This is We've kind of become the Resident Evil after the Slash episode here. But um, I watched the whole, the whole season, and they tried to throw in little Easter eggs and stuff from the games to make. Like, didn't they have the guy with the chainsaw with the burlap sack on his head? I saw yes, that I, in the. See, I saw that in a trailer, but I was like, "Where does that fit into this show?" It doesn't. It, it just pops up, and there's like this prison where they're holding a bunch of infected people and non-infected people, and then they have this the witch screaming one that can control other. I guess that's from another Resident Evil game where like there's like a screaming infected woman that can like control the other ones i thought that was left for dead i thought the witch was from left for dead <laughs> but they have one in resident evil and all of a sudden uh the burlap sack chainsaw person comes out and i'm like oh cool resident evil 4 awesome and then they just get killed i'm like okay it just it doesn't they they, they had little things like the dogs uh the liquors there's a whole scene with liquors but you don't really see them <laughs> It's like, what's that noise? It's hitting the car. Bam, bam, bam. You know, you see a tongue come out, and I don't know. It, it could have been done so much better. I don't think they had a big budget. Uh, it, they need to look at what Welcome to Raccoon City did. I haven't even finished that movie yet, and it's way better than this show. Um, I would like to see a TV series like that. Maybe if they can't make, if they didn't make enough money to make sequels to the movie, take that movie. And, you know, make a TV show of it, you know, picking up where, where, wherever it leaves off and uh, have fun with that that way. But this this Resident Evil, I tried. I gave it, I watched every episode. And I was like, I'm sure I don't think we're going to see a season two. And uh, luckily we're not. I don't have to watch it because I probably would have watched it because I'm a completionist. But, yeah, I, you said well, I, it was canceled, I, I, so... Yeah, I used to be a completionist, but when I got to the point where I would struggle through something and I would I would feel no better after completing it than I did when I was just quitting stuff. So to an extent, like a lot of times what I'll do, this is how Sophia got me into shows. If I'm not digging it in the beginning, she'll find like what she thinks are the best episodes and she'll show me those ones. And if it hooks me enough, I'll watch the show to get to that point. But I just watched the finale of that show, and I was, like, <laughs> yawning. And I'm like, if this is the finale, uh, how bad is the rest of it? Uh, <laughs> holy shit. Like, I just, I didn't know what was going on. Like, at one point, there was, like, opera music playing as drones were killing zombies. And I'm like, why don't they use that all the time? Why don't they just have drones right? follow them around and mow down zombies? Like, wh why is that not a thing? Like. There was one guy that shows up at the end of the first episode or the second episode, and he's like this heavy set guy that works for the evil sister, and he's sent to kidnap the good sister, I guess, and he, he's in like three or four episodes, and you think he's just this lazy asshole that somehow got a power, you know, a job in power or whatever, but then there's a scene where he actually has to fight for his life. It's against the chainsaw burlap sack person. It's in that episode. And he fights like hell, man. He was a badass. And I was like, wow. They're actually giving this guy that's not... He doesn't look like your normal heroic character. They're giving him like a badass arc here. I can't wait. You know, he's like turning from the bad guy to kind of the good guy. I cannot wait. This is it's getting interesting. I can't wait to see how their relationship, you know, goes after this. And she sees he's actually trying to help her. He's done helping the evil sister. And as I'm thinking this and telling it to my wife, I was like, oh, never mind. He tries to climb up a, a wall, but he's too big and heavy to pull himself up. So he just falls and gets eaten. And I was like, well, there goes the only thing that I've been interested in so far. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Uh, uh, could he get out of that? Oh, no, they just ate his arm. Okay, he's dead. Um, that was it. <laughs> Resident Evil Netflix, uh, zero out of five. <laughs> if I had to rate it, it was bad. It was bad. No redeemable qualities, Sean. At all. Yeah. I, I I was really excited for it, but then it got almost universally horrible reviews, and I'm like, well, that, that's not necessarily bad. There's, there's some movies I like that got horrible ratings, but 
the what the reasons they were giving for giving the horrible ratings, I'm like, you you can't really argue with those because they weren't just like, I don't like that casting, I don't like that. They were just like, there's no plot, it's petty drama. At one point, someone hacks Umbrella Corporation security. Someone just pulls out a phone and then hacks yep. the entire system with a cell phone with like a couple of hit. I'm like. What like the, this is not uh this is not like a a liquor store down the street trying to bypass the security. This is the Umbrella Corporation. How are you hacking? How is a fifteen year old hacking that with a cell phone? And I thought I was like, yeah, but whatever. But when I saw it on the screen, I was like, okay, that's pretty stupid. And um, also the stuff that happened in Resident Evil, the games like one, two, and three, four, five, all of them has really happened. It's all canon on this show. But it's like the new Umbrella Corporation. and But people have no... Like, most normal people have no idea what happened. It's like, really? You don't remember a whole city being nuked? You know? There was no fallout from that? Like, what the hell? Um, yeah, it was bad. I can't believe we talked about it so long. Uh, but I, I don't usually listen to critics either. Um, and I'm telling you, don't listen to us either. Like, if you want to see this show, you might love it. Uh Watch it if you want to. I'm just saying, like, I tried. I watched every episode. I really I really tried with this one. I wanted it to be good, but it was a disappointment. Um, was there uh, any anything else you had written down or whatever that uh, you wanted to touch base on? Or Well, I saw Invasion of the Body Snatchers for the first time. Uh, Which one? The 1979 one with uh, Donald Sutherland? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd never seen it before. I, I didn't realize that in the original one, it was the bad guy from the Weird Al movie, UHF, the bad guy. Mm -hmm. He was the main guy in the original one, and he cameos in the Donald Sutherland one as the first guy to tell everyone, they're coming, they're plant people, ah! <laughs> so I, I thought that was kind of cool, but see, I didn't know what the ending was. You know, I, I had no idea what the movie was about to a certain degree. It was pretty good. Um wasn't there like a 1990 movie called Body Snatchers or something? Not yeah, Invasion Yeah, and, and then, then it was The Invasion with Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman, but everyone just completely, you know, dogs on these movies, so I just, I don't feel a need to watch all those. It was just, it was one of the ones that's on my list of classics to watch. It's, um, it's funny you mentioned uh, James Bond earlier. I was thinking that like, like Indiana Jones could be like a James Bond thing where the mantle could be passed on to another actor, you know, not saying that it's a different person in the movies. Like it's actually just change the actor and keep making Indiana Jones movies. You know, Harrison Ford did it. Then we get more adventures of Indiana Jones, but it's a different actor like they do with James Bond. But now they're making an Indiana Jones five with Harrison Ford. And I believe it's in production as we speak right now. <laughs> Um, isn't he like 81 years old or something at this point? <laughs> like, yeah, and Shia LaBeouf's been blacklisted from Hollywood, so... What'd he do this time? I, I'm talking about what he did before, like the public urination and all that stuff, like, uh... Ah, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I, I get all these celebrity stories mixed up, but for, for a split second, I, I was like, oh, I can't believe he did all this shit, oh, that was Ezra Miller. <laughs> see, I hope that Ezra Miller stuff gets straightened out, man, because I want to see The Flash. I want to see Michael Keaton as Batman again. We could have with Batgirl. We could have seen Michael Keaton back as Batman and... Uh, uh, Brendan Fraser. Brendan, Brendan Fraser back, but freaking Discover, you know, merged with HBO and shit, and they're like, no, no, none of that, no Scoob 2. I don't care about Scoob 2. The last Scooby-Doo thing I liked was the live-action ones. Um, I tried watching Scream 5 a couple months ago. I quit that it, one. I, I could not get into it. Just, it was pointless. I think Part 4 was pointless. Yeah, I, I didn't. think the only reason Part 4, Part 4 or 5 should have never been made unless they were going to reveal that Gail, Sidney, or Dewey snapped and started killing people because all the shit they went through. And then they killed Dewey in Scream 5, like, brutally kill him, and I'm like, kill Gail, he's the only character who has not grown, in Scream 5, she is still the same, stuck up, selfish, 
only cares about her career and herself, character that she's always been, you know. But no, let's kill Dewey, uh, the one character that everybody relates to and looks forward to seeing. So here's my hot take on that. My take is that Scream 6 should be about Sydney not being able to process that her boyfriend was the killer and in her mind he's still alive. So she goes to the cemetery to dig him up and lightning strikes Skeet Ulrich's <laughs> corpse and he becomes <laughs> ghost face again. <laughs> No, let's go. Let's go. That's the Elephant only way Street. they'll get me to see screams. I, I, I'm not joking. Like Matthew Lillard to zo- zombie Ski Ulrich or Matthew Lillard as Ghostface in this movie. What if Matthew Lillard's character never died, man? You know, what if he just was been like, you know, in a psychiatric place or something for years and comes back? Or what if they make like a Pinocchio's Revenge thing where? You know, she thinks it's uh, Skeet, you know, Skeet Ulrich's character back killing people. And she's telling hurt. people. Yeah, and it ends up being Sydney at the end because she finally snapped. Look at everything she's been through. Even in Scream 5, they show a scene of her pushing her babies or something, but you never see the babies in the carriage. It's like an empty, it, it could be an empty carriage. She, she could have already snapped, you know, and I think that if, if anybody was going to snap, it would be her after five times being you know, in these scenarios. Uh, the only scene in Scream 5 I thought that was pretty badass was when the cop leaves and her son's in the shower and you think the son's going to get killed in the shower by Ghostface. But then Ghostface calls the sheriff in the car, I'm about to kill your son or whatever, so the sheriff rushes home, opens the front door, and as soon as she does, she gets, you know, gutted. Uh, that was the only part that I was like, oh, that was pretty cool, but yeah. And the killer a, turns out to be Sydney's barber. <laughs> I, Sydney being the killer is the only thing I can see bringing her back for another Scream movie. It should have already been done in four or five. And Gail needs to die. If they kill Dewey, it's time to get rid of Gail. Her character is the worst. She has just always been the worst. And Dewey did not deserve the death he got. I mean, he shot, he shot Ghostface like six times point blank in the point blank in the chest turned out it was the one that was the little girl like the little tiny teenage girl but somehow even with the bulletproof vest on she got up and was able to eviscerate him in the front and the back you know dewey would have shot ghostface right in the face the second he had a chance after everything he's been through he would not have chanced a, a chest shot and there's no way that little girl did that to him and that scene totally gave away that the killer was the boyfriend guy. I can't remember exactly how, but I had a note. I was making notes when I wrote it. And I said, boyfriend's the killer. Ghostface could have killed him, didn't do it. And uh, the girl, the phone calls Dewey right before he dies. And it's like, he's in the elevator with the person whose phone it is. I was like, oh, it's the boyfriend. And it was the boyfriend and the little skinny, tiny girl that somehow eviscerated Dewey. Um, but wow, man, I feel like I've just shit on everything we talked about tonight. I feel horrible now. I'm sorry. Well, 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 let me think of one good thing to say about something. Oh, I'm interested. This is just a little, little trivia piece I found out about. Um, so at Universal Studios, they do Halloween Horror Nights and they always have themes. This year's theme, I wish they would turn into a movie. Because it is a brand new storyline based on a classic Universal monster that I I would I would like to see this movie filmed in black and white. It is um the the bride the bride lives. It's about the ending of Bride of Frankenstein, where Frankenstein's like we belong dead and everyone dies. Yeah, this is the bride survived. And she reads Dr. Frankenstein's journal, and she learns how to speak. She learns how to do science. And she is going to bring Frankenstein back to life because she wants to, like, give him another shot now that she can actually process everything. Yeah. But she has to learn everything. Frankenstein, so she rebuilds the factory. 
she builds her vocabulary, her understanding of science, and she kidnaps Dracula's brides to use their blood to put into Frankenstein. So she is doing all of that, and the final line is like, it's a lie, but it's the bride saying that, and she has the goggles on. It's like they did a, they did a play by play of all the scenes you're going to encounter as you go through the Halloween Horror Nights, and I'm like, that sounds amazing. That Why don't they cool. make that? Especially if you made it like in black and white, like the original movies. That could be really cool to see the bride as the main character orchestrating everything. I was excited that we were going to get. Uh, new Universal Monster movies, but you know, Mummy kind of shut the bed. So, um, hey, we're, we're, not, still- we're not gonna we're not gonna bring all that negativity in here. We're we're just gonna we're gonna up, uh, brighter Frank. End on a positive. Note. We got got to end on a positive. <laughs> we we start talking about Tom Cruise. I'm gonna take the ship down myself. <laughs> that does sound cool, though. I would like to see that myself. That I would like uh, to go there. I, uh, I follow this page on Instagram. It's like Universal Monsters or something. They're, they have their ear to the ground for anything happening with the classic eight Universal Monsters. I'm talking book novelizations. Because we always talk about like the Freddy spinoffs and the Jason spinoffs. They they do stuff on like the, the Wolfman spinoffs and all those books that actually came out. So uh, they have a lot of cool information, a lot of cool behind-the-scenes photos. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about that later. Okay. Well, man... This has been a fun after the slash. We shat on Resident Evil for 20 minutes. Um, but uh, I'm glad to be back in the saddle. It looks like I'm we're going to have... I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, David Bergantino is going to be in a future uh, soon episode, probably in the near future of After the Slash. And I've reached out to Jeffrey Thomas, the guy that wrote Dream Dealers and the Punk Town books. Uh, we had him on the show a couple times early on. He was a lot of fun. I want to bring him back and maybe just do an episode where we just talk about, uh, on Out of Print Slashers, just talk about books in general. You know, the novelizations and tie-in world. Um, But yeah, thank you everybody for supporting the channel here on Patreon. Uh, Was there anything else you wanted to talk about tonight? I don't think so. I, I, I watched a horror movie a couple days ago, but like, the more I thought about it, it had a lot of potholes in it, so I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I recommend that one. So maybe I'll just save that for another episode. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm capped out for tonight. If I, if I get talking about that movie, I, I'm, I'm on for another like 15 minutes. Well, we'll, we'll uh, we can, we can come back around to that one on the next one for sure. And uh, I didn't mean for Resident Evil to become the topic of the night. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I just finished it right before we did this podcast, the the episode I was on, so I was already geared up to be like, what was with the crocodile? <laughs> yeah, thank you all so much. I uh, couldn't do this without you. Uh, we'll be back soon with more of After the Slash. Um, be excellent to each other, and uh, we'll see you soon. Well, this is Sean Campbell saying, but you're my co-host. Too bad you will die.